Last year, I built a Pi-based NAS as cheaply as possible using a Raspberry Pi 02W. It was a great project to learn what a NAS is and how to set one up, but obviously was quite limited by the capability of the 02W and the cheap storage hardware. So today we're going to be building a more functional NAS using a Raspberry Pi 5. To do that, we'll be using this new hat from Radsa, which allows up to 5 SATA drives to be connected to a Raspberry Pi 5 or a ROC 5A, and it's connected via their PCI Express port. It's got 4 SATA ports on the top, which drives plug into top down, and then 1 eSATA port on the front, which they include a cable to plug a fifth drive into. The spacing allows for 2.5 inch drives to be plugged in directly, but you can also plug in 3.5 inch drives with some extension cables. Power is supplied to the hat through either a 12 volt barrel jack on the side or a standard ATX Molex connector on the top. Additionally, you don't need a secondary power supply for your Pi 5. The hat will supply 5 volts to the Pi through the GPI opens, so that's a really handy feature. It's got a couple of other ports on it too, like an expansion port for a fan and OLED display on the top and an additional fan port at the bottom. Before mounting the hat onto the Pi 5, we need to add a cooling solution to its CPU. For this I'm going to use a Pi 5 active cooler. There is one issue with using this cooler, and that's that the N3 fins on the heatsink clash with the barrel jack port on the hat. This seems like a bit of an oversight by Radsa, but hopefully they'll come up with a solution in future revisions. For now my first thought was to just add some 6mm spacers between the hat and the Pi, so that there's a larger air gap between them. This isn't possible though without requiring an adapter for the GPI opens to still plug into the hat as well. So the only real solution is to either get rid of the cooler or modify the cooler to fit in underneath the connector, which can be done by removing the last three fins. This is relatively easy, you can just break them off with some needle nose pliers. For storage, I'm going to be using some crucial drives as I think they strike a reasonable balance between cost and quality. We're already going to be bottlenecked by the single PCIe lane shared between the drives, so there isn't much point in getting the fastest drives available today. Lastly, we need a microSD card for the operating system. I'm using a 32GB SanDisk Ultra card for this, and I've been using these for my Pi projects for years and haven't had any issues with them. I've flashed the microSD card with Raspberry Pi OS Lite, this is the base operating system onto which we'll be installing the NAS software Open Media Vault, or OMV. When flashing the operating system image, you may want to change the name of your NAS, and you'll need to enable SSH so that we can log into the Pi remotely once it is booted up, so that we can install OMV onto it. Radsa include hardware to secure the drives to each other, and this makes the stack a bit more secure. But I'd like to build this into an enclosure to better protect the Pi and hat, and to provide some additional cooling to the drives. To design the enclosure, I'm using Fusion 360. I started out with a model of the Raspberry Pi 5. I then added the Radsa hat and drives, and then modeled the enclosure around them. My initial thought was to lay the stack down horizontally, like a traditional 4 bay NAS, but the Ethernet port on the Pi, power port on the side of the hat, and the power button and LEDs mean that it'll be oddly proportioned and difficult to get the cables plugged into. So I decided to instead keep the vertical arrangement, and rather have the drives plug in through the top. I designed a tray for each drive with a pull tab to make it easier to swap out individual drives if needed. To cool the drives, I've included a cutout for a 40mm 5V fan on the side. This blows air across all four drives, and the air then comes up around the gaps between the drives on the top of the enclosure. I also added an LED bar to bring the drive activity lights onto the side of the case. There's a power button adapter to allow the Pi's power button to be pressed and its LED to be visible, and an optional window on the side of the NAS to look into it to see the drives. I'll include options with and without this window in the set of print files, as I know most people don't have the tooling required to make it up. The enclosure is split into two halves which screw together around the stack. This makes it easy to print, pre-assemble and to install. So let's get the components printed out. I printed the main components out of aluminium coloured PLA with black text. The button adapter and LED bar are printed in a clear PLA with black sections between the LEDs to separate them.
While the parts are being printed, let's make up the side panel. This is just laser cut from a piece of 2mm clear acrylic. And we then use a bending tool to put the 90 degree bend into it. To finish off the 3D printed parts, we need to add some M2.5 brass inserts for the screws to screw into. I've also included an option that doesn't require these inserts to make it easier to make up, but these inserts make the joints a lot more durable, so I'd recommend using them if you plan on taking the enclosure apart more than a couple of times. We can also glue the window into place using a few drops of super glue or CA glue in the corners. Now let's mount the fan onto it. I'm using a 40mm 5V Noctua fan with a thin dust filter. Before mounting the stack, we need to add the button adapter to the standoff in the corner of the pie. We also need to plug the FPC cable into the hat and the Pi. We can then mount the stack into the bottom half of the enclosure using some M2.5 screws. The status LED bar is mounted onto the top of the hat and is held in place with the Radsa hat standoffs. I was going to power the fan using a port on the Pi or Radsa hat, but Noctua don't have an adapter for these, so I instead soldered the included adapter lead to the 33 volt and ground pins on top of the hat. The fan can then plug into this adapter for power. The top half of the enclosure then screws onto the bottom half using 6 M2.5 screws, 3 on each end. We're now ready to plug our drives in and get it booted up. We can mount each drive into a tray using the screws provided with the Radsa hat. Then plug a 12 volt power supply and ethernet cable into the NAS to start it up. We'll need to leave the NAS for a couple of minutes to boot up, and we can then try to find its IP address. This can be done through our network's DHCP table, or using a utility like Angry IP Scanner. We're looking for a device that is called Pi NAS and has recently joined the network. We can then SSH into the Pi using its IP address to continue setting it up. We just need to copy this line to run a script to install OMV on our Pi. The installation script takes about 5 minutes to complete, and should take you to a screen similar to this telling you that the Pi is rebooting and your SSH session will be terminated. There's one more thing we need to do before opening up OMV to set up the software, and that is to enable the PCIe port on the Pi. This is disabled by default, so none of the connected drives will show up until we edit the config file to add these two lines and then reboot the Pi. You should then start seeing the activity lights on the drives light up, and your drives will now show up in the terminal. Now that all of the installation and configuration work is done, we can access the OMV workbench through a browser by entering the PAR's IP address. The default username is admin and password is OpenMediaVault. You'll want to change this immediately. There are loads of good guides on setting up OMV, so I'm not going to go through it in detail but I've essentially set up my four drives in a RAID 5 configuration to balance storage capacity and redundancy. This gives me a total usable storage capacity of 3 gigabytes. I've then created a storage volume, a shared folder on the volume, and a user account to access the network storage folder through my PC. With that complete, we can add a network location to our PC and then start using it. So let's see how good it is.
Copying a single large video file onto the NAS, we get an average speed of about 112 megabytes per second, which is about 900 megabits per second. A folder containing 4,500 smaller files and directories is obviously a lot slower, but is basically as fast as copying them to a local USB connected drive. Copying the large video file from the NAS, we get a similar average speed of around 110 to 112 megabytes per second. So this looks like we're saturating the gigabit ethernet port on the Pi. So next I tried plugging in a 2.5 gig ethernet adapter into one of the USB 3 ports on the front. This made a significant improvement. I instantly got an average of about 260 megabytes per second copying files to the NAS, although there were a few dips to around 120 megabytes per second and sparks a little over 270. Copying the same large file from the Pi to the PC, I got a little under 200 megabytes per second. So this is a worthwhile upgrade for less than $20. It really is a bit disappointing that the Pi 5 doesn't come with a 2.5 gig ethernet port. This makes a big difference to performance for projects that require a large amount of data to be transferred. Power consumption is where this NAS really shines, especially with solid state storage. At idle, the NAS uses a minuscule 9 watts, and this only goes up to around 12 watts under load. This is much less than the 30 to 40 watts that a typical 4 bay home or small office NAS uses. My NAS uses about 18 watts at idle with the drive spun down. So that's my new 4 bay Pi 5 NAS complete. Let me know what you think of it in the comment section below. I'll have a link to the 3D print files in the description if you'd like to print your own enclosure too. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more tech and electronics, projects, tutorials and reviews.